How do you break your addiction? Whether it's to alcohol, or whether it's to coffee, or whether it's to the love of your life. <laughs> Some guy or girl you're trying to just get away from. How do you break addictions? I'm here with Ty Lopez. How you doing, Ty? Good, how are you? And we're just driving in his Ferrari Spider, 45.8 Spider, there it is there. Uh, down to Anaheim on the, what freeway are we on? The 91. The, the 91, there you go, this guy recognizes you. Look, he's, <laughs> he's like, hang on, let's get it. Wind the window down. Wind the window down. <laughs> there you go. So uh, I think they recognized me actually, Ty, it wasn't you. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the car. <laughs> so uh, how, how do you break addictions, Ty? Um, well, okay, I think <laughs> the thing about addictions, most of the addictions that exist, let's take alcohol. I was talking to, to a scientist who told me that uh, people who get addicted to alcohol there's a evolutionary reason for it. It's people we sent, we developed uh, instincts many thousands of years ago to be able to uh, detect very sugary ripe fruits. So there, a long time ago, if you were good at tasting, sensing, and kind of liking these fruits that were over over ripe, uh, you had an advantage. Now in the modern world. If you like overripe fruit, which is basically what alcohol is, wine, and even in some ways what beer is, um, there's nothing wrong with you. But we live in a world. By the way, we take the 91, right? Ah, uh, she's no, yeah, but not no, not this one. Yeah, because this is a 605. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we're gonna keep stay on the 91. Yeah. So in the modern world, the problem is you and I still have this. Our ancestors ability to detect fruit and ripe fruit but now there's liquor stores everywhere that are trying to sell you alcohol and you get too much so the first thing I think for addiction is to realize almost all addictions in moderation there would be nothing wrong with them but in the modern world there's too much it's you know it's like sugar sugar is good for you but now every time you pump gas at a gas station there's 50 million candy bars sitting there waiting right. for you Right. So you gotta not freak out. I think people beat themselves up and go, "Was I born with this horrible curse?" It's not a curse or anything like that. It's just a shifting world, and we still have an old school brain. So that's number one. Because I think if you start hating yourself and beating yourself up too much, then you'll paralyze yourself, and uh, you actually do more harm than if you go, "Okay, I get why you have this." I always find for myself understanding helps me change when I don't understand stuff then I don't can't get the motivation to police change. reported ahead so then number two once you have the knowledge that you're norm, it's somewhat normal and number two you realize the only thing that will break addictions is either a lot of pain focusing on a lot of pain or focusing on a lot of reward so I kind of like how Tony Robbins approaches it where he goes write down a list of everything that is horrible that happened because of your addiction, let's say alcohol, uh, and then dwell on it for a while. Now, I will tell you, the one thing that I find is that sometimes that's not enough. It won't work. Like, sometimes, let's say you've hurt people in your family, your kids, your, like, some of us, some people are built to not really care. Like, they do care, obviously you care, but you don't care enough to, to make a change. So that leaves you to, to be, you can go, what's the reward for my life if I can break this addiction, not drink alcohol, not do drugs or whatever. And some people will react well to that. Like for the most part, you're not gonna do big things in life. If you, you're gonna lose your, for example, financial security for the most part. If you're, there's not many people with addictions that are doing amazing things. So. If a reward for you is to make a million bucks and do this and that and that, you can use that as motivation. You gotta know how to motivate yourself, I guess is what I'm saying. Right. And so those are two, and, and for some people, even those two don't work. Some people get them, whatever it takes to motivate yourself, like some people motivate themselves by going, I'll just never go to a bar again in my life. And some people have to do that. Like Alcoholics Anonymous sometimes like, look, once you're had this alcoholic issue, 
just don't ever go, like, because you won't be able to motivate yourself right. in any other way. So you got to know your motivate. It took me, a, like, I found out with myself, I wish someone had told me a long time ago, this is just my particular personality. Not everybody has this. Maybe 10% of people will be like this, like me. I primarily motivate myself by logic. So, like, if I read a book that presents a good case, like, this is why you change, then I'll change. If what doesn't work on me is as much the emotional stuff. So, in the Meyer Brig test, I'm a, I'm a, a, a ENTP. So, I'm a T, which is a thinker. And thinkers generally, generally are, are motivated by logic. So, but you might, a lot of people, like James, I think you're an F, so... F's are usually... I am an F. You're an F, right? Yeah. F's are usually motivated by... They want to feel a certain way, so they need to be... They need to go to a conference or be around people that give them a feeling. I don't need that. So you got to know yourself. I find most people... Yeah, I find most people, if ever, it'll take them 50 years to figure out how to motivate themselves. Then it's too late. You're already too old to care. <laughs> right. So I took a 30-day break from alcohol back in 2010 and I just kept going so I'm about five and a half years as we're recording this this video for me it was the the pros or the benefits that I got from not not drinking far outweighed any immediate pleasure that I got from drinking right um, and since then I lost about 13 pounds of fat and made more money and my friends my romantic relationships have been a lot better and everything has just been better since I, I I quit the alcohol and it all started from just taking a 30 day right. uh, 30 day break um, is that something like just take like resetting taking a 30 day break whether it's alcohol or whether it's anything else is that something that can actually trigger the human brain to make meaningful change I know you've got the 67 steps and it's like right. 66 days but can something like that really reset the human brain uh to then go and live like an, an optimum life. I think, yeah, for sure. I mean, you, you can do a 30 day challenge and like you said, do it again, do it again and do it again. Some people can break, my grandma, she she said, in like half she a mile. read exit. In half a mile. that, I think exit it was, to exit Bloomfield Avenue. I was thinking it's saying here, we got, we got to exit on Bloomfield Avenue, I think. I wonder if this is that, I'll get it on my too. Okay. In the 1950s, my grandma said, she read something that was put out by the Surgeon General that said alcohol, you know, basically, I mean, cigarettes are bad for you. And so my grandma said she just decided on one day and she's never smoked since then. So my grandma is a little bit like me. My grandma was motivated by logic. Somebody presented to her. My grandpa, on the other hand, he didn't listen. And of course, my, you know, unfortunately, my grandpa died of emphysema because he would not listen so, we've got ways and Google Maps going off at 100 miles an hour here. So, my grandma knew, now she knows, it's pretty simple for my grandma to fix herself. My grandma just needs a case presented to her. Somebody should have been, I wish somebody would have known how to motivate my grandpa. Like, maybe my grandpa needed, you know, I don't know, to be yelled at or something. Are you actually going to take Bloomfield? Uh... Or are you yeah, just going to stick I'll on stick, here? I'll stay. I reckon just stay. Oh, I think I'll um, just stay on it, yeah. So, At 900 feet, turn right on Bloomfield Avenue, then turn left. Yeah, I think we just stick on this, yeah. Then for, so, um, can you change in 30 days? Yeah, some people like my grandma change in one day. Well, I changed in 30 days because I, yeah. kept, I kept going. Like, I lost 13 pounds and 30 days of not drinking alcohol and my skin got better and I started sleeping seven or eight hours of deep restorative sleep and my, I had a lot more mental clarity. So that changed for me, I just kept kept going. A lot of people who've done the 30 day no alcohol challenge uh, just keep going. Some people do it, then they go and have a few drinks right? and they re-explore their relationship with alcohol and for the rest of their life, everything's fine. They just enjoy wine and champagne and beer on occasion other people come back and they say, you know what, I want to do it again because I got hung over once. Or, exit right, right to exit 19 C. Shoemaker Avenue. Well, I think the way I would approach that is uh, do the th do 30 days and then that gets you close. The main thing that a 30-day thing does is it lets you know yourself. Knowing yourself is, you know, right. that's the 
the oldest of the said shoemaker. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take this route. We're gonna try. We're experimenting. So the experimentation mentality is almost always the winning one. So if you do 30 days and you're like James, in 900 feet, turn at the left end of the 30 days drive, you go, then turn left. I never need to do this again because I now have full control over myself. Then the experiment's done. Worship us.